everyone. Um, my bishop said, thank you so much for coming out. Thank you for joining us, not coming out because we're all in our homes, but thank you for joining us uh, this morning for prayer, uh, Mental Health Monday, where we pray for different things that uh, are plaguing us as a community, as a body of Christ both mentally as well as emotionally. And I know sometimes people think that there's a difference between mental health and emotional health. They're both the same. They're one and the same. You know, something that affects us uh, emotionally will affect us mentally. Stuff that affects us mentally will affect us emotionally. So um, this morning, uh, we're gonna be talking about communication skills. And I know it's kind of a different um, area that we've previously talked about, you know, when we talked about um, actual disorders, you know, and then we come in with communication and how does that fit in? So communication is very important for um, the body of Christ because it allows us to talk to one another in order to, um, to fix issues, you know, if there's a grievance between brothers or sisters in Christ, you know, having those communication skills will um, soothe that, that situation out. Um, it provides us with the ability to be able to talk to our pastor, talk to our leaders, or talk to another saint of God about whatever's plaguing us, whatever that's going on in our life. Communication skills will uh, help us in our marriages, our relationships, um, on our jobs, and those type of things. If we don't um, have those correct communication skills, will cause stress, and stress, <clears throat> excuse me, will affect us in a multitude of ways, both physically, emotionally, as well as mentally. Um, and then also, we've been encouraging everyone, if you need professional help, if you need um, additional help, to seek out professional help through a counselor or a therapist. Having those communication skills will help you to open up to your therapist, open up to your counselor about what's going on in your life. So this is really important, um, and I pray that um, everyone will be able to learn something you know we can all learn if you don't learn then you are a fool so i pray that everyone will be able to learn something so before we begin i really feel led for us to have a word of prayer um last week's um lesson well not last time but last week's topic was a it was a it was a hot topic you know uh, they should have got a lot of uh, feedback. I got a lot of feedback, and I'm sure, you know, those that didn't get feedback, you all had feedback. And I never want us to um, address the topic and just kind of leave you there. So we know that God is our provider, He's our protector, and He's our healer. He's the ultimate physician. So we're going to pray for healing. Um, this morning, and I'm going to ask, I'm just going to call um, three people before we begin to pray for healing. I'm going to ask Sister Carlita Burson. Um, I'm going to ask Sister Cassandra Halliburton, and then uh, Bishop Bell. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Lord, we just thank you for today, Lord God. We ask that you continue to send healing throughout each and every one of our minds, bodies, and spirits, Lord God. That you will touch us, Lord God, in a mighty way, Lord God. That we will repent, Lord God, and that we will be forgiven, Lord God. And Lord God, we thank you on today, Lord God, that we can repent, Lord God. And Lord God, we ask that you heal our bodies, Lord God. We need any old past pain, stronghold, or burdens that we are carrying in our bodies, Lord God. And that you will have your way in each and every one of our lives. And that your will will be done, Lord God. And as we get healed, that you will help us to heal others, Lord God. And that we will listen and be open and honest and tell people the truth about you and your word. And how you can heal us and give a testimony of how you healed us from the sins that we went through in our life. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Sister Cassandra Halliburton. Uh, Sister Carmen, I got customers in my car. Oh, okay, no, 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 no problem. Bishop Bell. 
Praise the Lord. Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, we praise you, we glorify you. We thank you for your goodness, your mercy, and your grace. Lord, we come this morning, Lord, giving you praise, honor, and glory for the good things that you have done. Lord, we ask you to bless right now, Lord, those that are struggling with the thing of anger, Lord. Hallelujah. Help us to bring our anger under subjection to the Holy Ghost, Lord. Help us to exercise the fruits of the Spirit, Lord, that we'll have temperance, we'll have self-control. And Lord, we ask you to bless right now in a special way. Bless those that are having problems communicating, Lord. Open the lines of communication, Lord. Help them to be articulate, to know how to voice the things that need to be voiced. In the mighty name of Jesus, strengthen and encourage us or bless us according to your will. Bless this, this, this ministry right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the anointing of the Holy Ghost take control. And Lord, we'll give your name the praise, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. And then Minister Iverson, could you come on and pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you right now, Lord, with thanksgiving and praise. God, we thank you, Lord, for this day that you have made. God, it is your doing it, and it is marvelous in our sight, God, as we are gathered, as we assemble here, Lord, together, God, in the name of Jesus, God, listening, Lord, to Lord, what you will have to say to us, Lord, that we may be able to grow, God, in the name of Jesus, to be the men and the women of God, Lord, that you would have us to be, God, in the name of Jesus. When it comes to communication, God, help us, Lord, not only, Lord, to be articulate, Lord, in expressing, Lord, what we need to express, Lord, in the name of Jesus, but, but help us, Lord, to have empathy, Lord. Help us, Lord, to be able to listen, Lord, to understand and not just listen to respond, God, in the name of Jesus, God. Strengthen and encourage your people, God, in the name of Jesus, God. We know that healing is the children's bread, God. We ask, Lord, that you heal, Lord, any, Lord, emotional, God, any... Lord, anger issues, God, in the name of Jesus, God, and that you help us, Lord, to be able to open up our mouth, Lord, and, Lord, cry out for help, Lord, when we need it, God, and seek help, Lord, hallelujah, Lord, even from professionals, God, in the name of Jesus, God, that we can be healed, Lord, that we can be whole, Lord, all these us we ask in Jesus' name, by faith we receive it as done, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Amen, amen. Thank you so much for those that prayed. Um, so, I'm going to first call up um, Sister Kalana Garrison to come. Um, to unmute her her mic. She will be talking to us um, in regards to communication with relationships. She's a uh, she's a newlywed, you know, and so they've done a lot of um, they did a lot of what's that a uh, pre marriage counseling. Um, so she has a lot of great tips on communicating within a relationship, and we know that when we have good communication within relationships. It eases a lot of stress in our lives. Hey Amen. Good morning, everyone. Praise good morning. The Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Um, so <laughs> I found it just um, interesting when, <laughs> when Carmen reached out and asked me about this because, as she mentioned, um, I'm a newlywed, and so I was like, it hasn't even been a whole year yet. Like, what advice can we really give? But um, the Lord definitely um, is one who blesses and he leads and guides us. And I think that the information in the scriptures that I'm touching on, when, when I say relationships, definitely with your um, marriage relationships, this, these scriptures are helpful, but they should be helpful in any relationship, whether it's an issue with a family member, like communication with a family member, with a friend, uh, with someone you just know, a neighbor, um, somebody you work with, just people in general. Uh, one of the issues that I think is plaguing the world in general today, and Minister Iverson kind of touched on it when he opened in prayer, I mean, so many people listen to respond and they don't listen to understand. And um, one of the large things about communication is that a lot of it is listening and it's taking in information as opposed to trying to respond right away, be right, or talk someone down. Um, that seems to be the way how things are today. And we are trying to not be of the world. Um, and that's in every area of our lives with how we interact with one another, how we live and definitely with how we communicate. Uh, a lot of times communication, our style is developed uh, at a young age and we build upon it as we get older. And so the longer you're in something, the stronger, it, it can be a stronghold in your, li in your life, um, how you communicate, how you respond. And so 
that's another thing that we can pray about, um, about the Lord, about renewing our hearts and minds to improve on how we communicate with others. So um, we'll start off with some scriptures and with James chapter one and verse 19, there's uh, 19 and 20. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. There's probably plenty of times where, um, as you all mentioned, the prior uh, conversations and session on anger, um, you know, when you're operating in wrath, especially when it comes to communication, it doesn't bring out anything good. So um, this scripture employs, implores us to, you know, really listen and um, slow to speak and slow to wrath, not to be so quick to respond with everything. Uh, when you think it's a certain way, sometimes it's our lack of understanding a situation which causes differences in communication and um, when you're dealing with someone, whether they're upset or whether you feel like you're getting upset, sometimes it's better to get a, a different understanding of where they're coming from or what they're really trying to say. Because I may say something a certain way, and then my husband may be used to saying it a different way. It's learning that person. Um, as Carmen mentioned, we did have premarital counseling which helped us out a lot as far as uh, communication. That was a big one that was discussed in premarital counseling and our communication styles. Um, and I, I want to say the Lord, actually, it was interesting. Our relationship, would be, we lived in two different states. So it's not like we saw each other all the time. All we had was, you know, really talking on the phone and getting to know one another. Um, not all the time. And we did, you know, make visits, but it was, uh, it helped us with learning our communication styles ahead of time. So the Lord did bless in that area. Amen. Amen. Um, Carmen, I don't know how much longer you wanted me to go. I do have some other I mean, stuff. too. I mean, if that's all the Lord gave you, that's cool. Oh, okay. No, I did have some other scriptures because okay, uh, yeah, yeah. Proverbs has so much about communication, wisdom in general, but wisdom and communication, um, you know, in the book of Proverbs, you have Proverbs 15, a gentle answer turneth away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. That's the very first verse in Proverbs 15. And the tongue of the wise adorns knowledge, but the mouth of the fool gushes folly. So um, our communication, sometimes, you know, some people, they always talking, but they're not saying anything. I don't know if you really mm -hmm. heard, heard that term in the past, but I mean, there's somebody we know who holds a very high position in the United States of America who kind of does that right now. Just always saying stuff and sometimes they're not really saying too much or they're stirring up things based on how they say. Mm -hmm. uh, that fourth verse, a soothing tongue is a tree of life, but a perverse tongue crushes the spirit. The lips of the wise spread knowledge, but hearts of a fool are not upright. These are all within the, this is before you even get to the 10th verse of Proverbs 15. Um, so, you know, the word has so many different passages and there's so many different scriptures that teach us about communication and how, uh, you know, how our intent of communication can either build people up or break them down. And uh, we need to pray and ask when we communicate with others, what are we intending to do? Um, sometimes we need to pray and ask the Lord to help us with our communication with someone. Maybe it's someone who seems to be tearing us down with their communication. And, um, you know, the Lord will always work that out one way or the other. And it's not to say that it'll be easy right away. However, he does um, work things out and he answers our prayers, especially when our prayers are aligned with his will for our lives. Um, amen. 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 So, um, and then one more verse in verse 18 in chapter 15, a hot tempered person stirs up conflict, but one who is patient calms a quarrel. Amen. Yeah, the Lord is good, and his, besides 
chapter 15, also chapter 18. There are plenty of verses that talk about communication style. I advise everyone to go and take a look in their reading time today. And may the Lord add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his word. Amen. 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 And Praise Sister Lord. Kalani, if you can just uh, have a word of prayer for um, co communication amongst Amen. the um, relationships. Will do. Lord, um, we come before you today thanking and praising you for all of your goodness and mercy. And we thank you for the word that you have left with us to lead and guide us and to teach us in our interactions with other ones and with our loved ones. Um, those who we care about and those who we have joined together with our spouses. Lord, bless communication in the marriages. Bless those who feel like they don't know how to communicate with someone else. Um, lead them to the right verses. I pray that their hearts will be touched and press and bless the hearts, touch the hearts of their spouses as well. Um, I think my prayer is to soften everyone's heart so they can try to better understand one another, better communicate, and let you lead and guide their discussions and their interactions with one another. Um, empower those who feel like they don't have a voice, and I pray that you build them up in the word and that you build up their spirit so that they will have a voice that is seasoned with salt and grace and that you will bless the communication not only with those marriages but within families as well in jesus name amen amen amen, amen. thank you so much karana amen uh, a lot of uh, great verses for us to meditate on when it amen. comes to communication you know especially within relationships i'm not married but you know I'm sure, you know, communication, I know communication is like one of those big things that um, marriage counselors like to hone in on um, because it can make or break a relationship. And, you know, if you're in a bad relationship, that causes stress and you can act out in a multitude of ways when you are stressful. Um, I'm now going to ask... Um, the street, Sylvester, to come on and um, to talk to us. Praise the Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. So, when we talk about uh, uh, communicating, there are so many different styles of communication. Um, there are, uh, there's the nonverbal and the verbal communication. But then there is also uh, different ways that com we communicate depending on um, how we're feeling. In other words, whether or not we're angry or not. So of course we know that when you're angry, you're less logical. You're more likely to um, reject any explanation or solutions that another person is trying to um, uh, communicate to you. Um, when you're angry, you have uh, a very distinct type of uh, communication posture. So um, there are like three communication postures. So the aggressive posture really says that I count, but you don't count. The passive communication posture is, um, is really saying that I don't count. And then there's the passive aggressive communication posture, which says, I count, but you, you don't count, but I'm not going to tell you that. I'm not going to tell you what it's all about. And so learning how to communicate, uh, we send uh, three different, we communicate three different ways. I told you that that's 63% of us talk through our body language. 25% of us through our voice, that's your tone and your pitch and the volume in which you uh, uh, say your words. And 12% of us through spoken word. Now, you may find it funny that the 12% is through spoken word because when you think about communicating, you usually think about somebody talking, right? Right. But that's not necessarily true because most of us talk through our body language. So 
if, if uh, I was thinking about, I was listening to Kalan and I, I was thinking, you know, a lot of times uh, couples do not do intense um, uh, therapy or uh, have, have a, a, a talk about their communication styles. Do you pout? Or do you say your spouse is saying something wrong and then you say nothing and you go in the room and close the door? Well, something's wrong, but because you didn't close the door, I'm not getting ready to ask you because I'm going to leave that alone. I'm just going to go, we're going to, you go in your corner and I'm going to go in my corner and we're going to, you know, we're going to both be quiet. But that's not really communicating to the person. And so, or we sit with our arms crossed, we roll in our eyes, we shaking our legs. Um, the person starts talking, we looking around the room, we hold my head down. So there are a lot of ways that we communicate. Um, and even when we're not angry at people, we do this nonverbal communication um, where we're not paying attention to what the person is saying. We're on our phone, we're scratching our head, we're looking around and we're not making direct eye contact with another individual. The most important thing you can do when talking to somebody is make direct eye contact because that lets the person know that you're present and in the moment and you're willing to listen, even if you're not willing to listen. But nine times out of 10, if you make direct eye contact, you won't have a choice but to listen. So um, how do we communicate um, healthily? So there's some, there's some ways to communicate. There's some do's and don'ts when it comes to communicating to other people. So I'll kind of give you a few of the do's and a few of the don'ts. Uh, use I statements. Um, when I say use I statements, say things like, uh, I think or I feel or I believe. So if you're upset with somebody, you can, it's okay to communicate that, but you can say, well, I feel as though you weren't listening to me, or I feel as though um, how I, you're not, you're not interested in how I feel. Um, uh, another way is to be brief and to the point. Um, if you want to say something, you don't have to carry it out in a long conversation. State what you want to say. Be brief and be to the point. But don't say it in an aggressive manner or an accusatory tone. Stay on one topic at a time. So don't, when you get ready to say something, don't say, well, you did this last week and then you did that last year. And this is how you acted the day before yesterday. And I feel, stay on one topic at a time, one thing at a time. Right. Um, if you want somebody to pay attention to what you're saying, um, don't interrupt them when they're when it's their turn to talk. Let that person say what they need to say. Wait until they're they're finished, and then this is not about uh, you jumping back and giving tit for tat, but it's really you listening to what they're saying, and then you don't make excuses for your behavior. You kind of say, okay, I, I, I hear what you're saying, and maybe I, I should pay attention, more attention, or I didn't realize that I was doing that, but I thank you for bringing that to my attention, and um, uh, I love you, and if you could help me work on that, that would be great. So some of the don'ts, don't interrupt the person while they're speaking. Don't use blaming or accusing or hurtful statements. And don't tell another how they do or should. Don't tell them what, how they, what they should do or how they should think or how they should feel. Because you can't tell a, another person how they, what they should do, how they should feel, or how they should think. So don't even, even try to address that. Um, uh, there's such a thing as called fighting fair. Uh, I don't know of any two people who can live together for any amount of time 
and never have a disagreement. That is just not going to happen. You're two different people. Um, siblings disagree and fall out. A husbands and wives disagree and fall out. Children disagree and fall out. And it's because we're individuals and that's what makes us unique. None of us are, are the same. So learn to fight fair. You don't bring up uh, you don't bring up other people's, you don't bring up anybody mama, you don't bring up anybody daddy, you don't talk about folks' kids. Fight, when you fight fair, fighting fair means you explain. <laughs> Why you laugh? Who is that laughing? That's Bishop. <laughs> well, Y'all want to post the tail now. Uh, uh, now, don't talk about nobody mama. No, you don't talk about nobody mama, you don't talk about their kids, you right. know. Uh, fighting fair means that you stick to whatever the disagreement between you, the two of you are, is. So you can express your anger um, in a positive way. You can say to a person, um, "What you, uh, the statement that you made, um, I felt as though it was belittling." And now, of course. I, uh, if I made a, a, that statement, I might, a person may, it's, you, you know, you want to get on the defensive, but instead of getting on the defensive, it's important that you listen to what the person is saying, because whether that was true or not, whether that was your intention or not, because I feel that way, or I have that impression, I'm going to act out on that impression. And we have to remember that people act out on their feelings and their emotions. They think of it, they think about it, and then they act out on it. And so um, one of the things we want to learn to do, and I hope hopefully uh, this will help, is when you're feeling angry or, or upset, that you don't sit on that anger. Um, it's good to pray and ask the Lord to help you to um, communicate positively how you're feeling because you can misinterpret things that people say, because we don't always speak um, properly. We don't always express ourselves properly. So it's easy that um, I'll give you a really plain, a simple analogy. I was walking down the hallway at work one day and a student said something to me, but I, didn't, I wasn't paying attention. I was reading something and I really wasn't paying attention. But that student felt as though I had blew them off. And so when the student came to class, the student was um, acting out non-verbally. Um, when I called on the student to answer the question, the student refused to answer the question. Um, the student said, what her, um, you know, her hands uh, crossed, across, uh, crossed across her chest the whole time we were in class. She was on the phone looking down, looking around. And instead of reacting to it, I didn't. I waited till after the class. And then I asked to speak to her. And I said to her, um, tell me what's going on. You appear to um, be uh, a little angry today or a little upset today. And when I asked her, she said, well, you walked past me in the office. I spoke to you and you didn't even speak to me. Now, I didn't really see her. I really didn't hear her. And so I said to her, you know, some days for me are busier than others. And I really did not hear you speak to me. I don't even remember passing you in the hallway. And I apologize if you feel as though I rejected you or, were, or was not paying any attention to you. But I honestly can't even remember seeing you in the hallway. And once I said that, the student was then able to say, well, I just felt like you were blowing me off. And I get that and I apologize, but I need you to understand that some days for me are busier than most. And I don't want you to be offended if I don't, if I don't remember your name right away, or if I walk past you in the hallway, especially if you see me with a handful of work or I'm talking to somebody, don't get upset if I don't respond to you right away. It's not that I'm blowing you off. That's why we have office hours. If you want to talk, it's easier for you to uh, come into the office and talk to me. Now, that's just an analogy of what 
a possible situation could happen. But what happens if you have to deal with a person who blows up every time you say something? Mm -hmm. So um, some of us may feel like that all sounds well and good, uh, evangelist, but I, uh, I live with a person or I work with people you just can't talk to. Um, they're not listening to you. Um, they really don't want to hear you. And when you try to say something to, you, to them, they go off on you. So there are other forms of communication. You know how we be on these little phones and we be texting things? Mm -hmm. You know, you can text a person a message. Um, you can write a person a letter or you could call them and leave a voicemail. Um, because we're more apt to listen to voicemails anyway. Or we're more apt to look at a text. Well, I'm not. I don't. I'm not a text person. I, I might see the text two days later. However, you can email a person or you can text a person if you don't feel comfortable um, talking to them face to face. And in that email or in that text, you can say to them, um, it would be wonderful if we could go, if we could meet face to face and kind of clear the air. And the last point I want to make um, is that even if you learn how to communicate properly, it doesn't mean that the other people whom you wish to communicate to are willing to learn to communicate properly. And you have to be willing to understand that and not um, become frustrated or allow your anger to boil up because another person is really not open yet. You have to continue to pray for that person. And a lot of times before you even start a conversation with a person, it's really good to pray first and ask the Lord to give you direction on what you should say and how you should say it. Because um, that way, the Lord will open the doors of communication for you. Um, but never, ever, I don't want anybody, if, if you know, I want you to practice um, this. Never, ever scream when another person is screaming. And never, ever holler your point. Because um, one of the things that I used to say to clients all the time is that your, I can't understand the words, your behavior is so loud that I can't understand the words coming out of your mouth. So in other words, because you're behaving so outrageously, I'll never be able to hear what you're saying because your behavior is crowding out what you're trying to say. And as a clinician, when what you say and, and how you act don't line up, then I automatically go with the behavior because that's going to tell them that's usually the true picture of who a person is. You can't hide your, who you are because it's going to come out in your behavior. So uh, I hope that's helpful. I, I, got, I had a lot of stuff, but I don't want to take up any more time. So with that, I'll just pray if that's okay, Carmen. Yes, ma'am. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, I come to you on this morning asking you, oh God, to help us be better communicators. Father God, I ask that you would uh, help uh, each and every one of us who are on this line to be more receptive and understanding of another person's feelings and realize that we don't always have the same communication styles. Father God, help us, give us the words to say to each other and help us to speak to one another in loving terms and not be angry when us, another person doesn't do or say what we think or behave the way we think that they should. Teach us to pray for each other so that in our communicating, we'll also be communicating with you so that the other person, not only that that other person would change, but that we would change ourselves. Help us, oh Lord, to get uh, uh, hold of our anger and turn it over to you and release it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Evangelist Sylvester. That was really great information. If you all have any questions, if you have any comments, please feel free to put it in the chat. Um, we will be um, answering questions throughout as well as at the end. Um, now I'm going to ask uh, Brother Wayne to come on. 
brother Wayne um, runs a AA, or he used to, I'm not sure if he still does it, but he's run um, AA meetings where people will come together and they will talk about um, the different problems or the different issues that they had that led them to drinking or I don't know, I think drugs is NA, but led them to drinking as well as like problems that would continue them or lead them to go back to drinking. So um, his insight will be invaluable when it comes to communicating. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everyone. Morning. Good morning. Uh, when Carmen texts me yesterday, I say, communication. Oh, uh, no, that has been my problem most of my life. Uh, I don't know where to, to start. I'll start. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to use me as, as an example. So, Brother uh, Wayne, I guess to give yeah. you a little bit more clarity. Um, so, when you ran your meetings, um, you would talk to your clients or you would talk to the people in the groups um, and you kind of help them to understand some of the issues that they had and help them to communicate them effectively, right? Uh, no. No? No. Okay, so uh, I'm running an AA meeting. What exactly? No, yeah. Well, uh, you, you are voted in as a chairperson to pretty much keep order in the meeting and mm -hmm. how long a person talks and and in chairing the meeting, also had to learn how to relate to each individual, each personality. And at the time that I was doing it, as, mm -hmm. as you were doing it, I was also learning myself and, and gaining information because each and every person that, that spoke I, I received something from, see, mm -hmm. because uh, um, I was never given any kind of direction on how to communicate because I was raised to be quiet and not say anything as far as how I felt. So that followed me on into adulthood that I just didn't express or say how I felt about. Uh, well, Sister Carmen. Yes, sir. Sister, why don't you go to the next person, since Brother Wayne is not qualified to teach this section, go to the next uh, person to uh, get the information that we need from them. Okay. And then we'll, we'll get, we'll get some, something that Brother Wayne is qualified to teach on. Well, he was actually... A yeah, well, some, some, some time to teach and not having the example, Bishop, of, of what you're teaching about because, of, well, but Brother you know, Wayne, Brother you know, Wayne, I, we, have a, we have a particular subject that we're teaching on, and so we need somebody to teach in that area. Now, maybe some other area we can help us with, but this is not the area for you, evidently. You said it yourself. So we're going to the next person, so they will be qualified to teach in that area, and then we'll find out what is your area of expertise so we can use you again? We have used you before. We want to use you again. You have a lot of information. But in this particular case, we're looking for somebody that can help us in the lines of communication. Uh, Mr. Can I say something? Uh, who's, who's the, first of all, I think we're getting out of the way. We've got to stay, stay with the program. Who's next? Mr. Carmen, can I say something? Yes, ma'am. So... I, um, I'm also a certified drug and alcohol counselor. So the communication, the skills of persons who have um, been on um, or are, are recovering or are still on uh, 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 alcohol and chemicals, because alcohol is a drug, um, mm -hmm. uh, though they lack communication skills. So they usually act out. So they're more like um, youth. Uh, uh, when uh, youth don't know how to express themselves, they kind of act out that you see stuff in their behavior. So it's similar to that. Um, 
when when um, a person goes into counseling for alcohol and, and chemical use and you sit in the groups and you listen to them, they're really communicating, learning to communicate. That's why you have groups and individual counseling. They're learning to talk about their feelings and their anger versus getting high about it. So for most uh, persons who have been impacted with alcohol and chemicals, I don't know how to express myself. So in other words, oh, it's a wonderful sunny day. I guess I'll get out. Oh, it's raining outside. I guess I'll get out. Um, uh, my, my grandmother passed. I guess I'll get out. My, my sister uh, 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 is mad at me. I guess I'll get out. So they really don't, instead of dealing with whatever feelings they're feeling, they uh, fall back on alcohol and chemicals because they don't really know how to, com to communicate how they, they feel. And that, that's probably going to take another segment. How do we learn how to say how we feel um, without uh, acting out? Again, it's learning how to um, discuss how you feel and talk about what you feel without blowing up, getting angry, and or getting high about it. If that helps, we, we, under, we understand yeah. that, and you're absolutely That's right. We understand that. But what I'm saying, we're trying to follow this schedule of this of topic that we're dealing with right now. So nobody's putting anybody down or uh, saying that they don't have anything to give. They do have something to give, but not in this particular area. We can use them in another area. So that's the point I was trying to make. So uh, we should go to the next person that has something People to offer, if we have anybody. Person, he was actually the last person. He was the last Amen. person. Well, we had some people fall out at the last minute. Um, but oh, okay. Well, we have time. We do we have, have time to questions. deal with the questions. Right. We have time to deal with the question. And uh, it could be a question that Brother Wayne could answer. I mean, he, he's welcome to participate. So we, we can deal with the questions. Sure. All right. Some, well, let's go. Sometimes. Uh, Bishop. We haven't gave the question yet, Brother Wayne. We got to wait to the question. We haven't got the question yet. No, I, th I think he was trying to address you, Bishop. Oh, okay. What is it? Sometimes in you expressing your life story, there's also teaching in 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 your story because uh, you're giving an example of. of where you had to come from. So it's not necessarily, you know, uh, I, I would say things written down in the book. These are life experiences, but it's also teaching. People learn from your experiences. So, but, you know, I, I'm not, I don't understand. I don't have a problem. <laughs> don't have and you know, problem. Brother Wayne, you Amen. are absolutely right. We do learn from teaching and- Teaching um, experiences. In yeah, our experiences, true. I do agree with that. Um, and, and I mean, I, I do have to say in another segment, it would be great. So, you know, we had you on when we were talking about um, like different childhood things. But for this particular topic, I was really looking for your experiences with running the AA okay. All right. So, um, Amen. That's fine. You know, we can always come back to you. Um, and, and I, I can I say this right. also, first of all, I want to say this, that when it comes to communication, a lot of times, a lot of people are different, especially husbands and wives. I don't want to say which one, but particularly husband and wife. Most of the time in communication, when there's any kind of commu communication difficulty, the wife is always the aggressor and trying to find a solution. Me and take a position where I ain't got no problem. Everything's all right with me. You know, you the one got a problem communicating. So a lot of times, most of the time, it's a problem with the man communicating. The woman wants to communicate. That's why she's the first one to seek help. And also, we got to realize that men and women communicate differently. You know, if I come home and my wife said, uh, the washer does not work anymore. We need a new washer. My communication is, all right. So I'm through with the whole subject. When I said, all right, I'm finished. But she wants to know where we're going to get it, how we're going to pay for it, what payment plan are we going to get, what type of washing machine are we going to get, She's more concerned with details. Women like detailed information more so than men. So we need to understand that sometimes, and then a lot of times in a relationship, some people are very repetitious in their communication. They talk a lot. Other men, other people are just like, okay, yeah, all right, yeah. So 
communication sometimes can be difficult in a marriage, sometimes it can be difficult in a relationship. And I will say anybody that's dating and thinking about getting married, you should kind of take that into consideration about the communication because if you have communicate communicable problems, it's going to be a great problem in the future. So it's better to find out how do you communicate with that person? Do you communicate good or do you communicate, you know, average? So you can find that out. It Amen. That's true. Amen. And then also not just marriages, but also relationship with friends, with family, um, with coworkers. Um, and then also right. communicating with our therapist, with our pastor, and then most importantly, communicating with God. Sometimes when we do have a problem with communicating our feelings, um, we have a hard time communicating that to God. And we've got to, like brother Vince said, you know, we should teach on emotional intelligence. That's a really great topic that um, I would love for us to, you know, kind of uh, talk about one day. Amen. Um, but I did have a uh, question. Um, and I think this would go towards um, Evangelist of Vestal. It says, what if you're married to a narcissist? All the information given was very helpful and informative and true but it's easier said than done, especially dealing with someone who is always fighting against you. Amen. So, praise the Lord. The narcissists are not really fighting against you, they're fighting against themselves. Mm -hmm. So, uh, with, e with every relationship, there is give and take, and there is in healthy relationships, there's give and take. And so, when you are, if you're married to, uh, or truly married to a narcissistic type personality, um, that person, you are never going to be able to have a calm discussion with them, especially if they feel threatened. Um, if they feel as though you're uh, you're um, challenging, down, you're challenging them, or you're pulling down um, any of that little that little wall that they built up, they live in this little uh, they live in their own little world of importance. Right. And if you are trying to break that barrier down, that is not going to help your relationship. That person actually really needs to be in therapy. Um, mm -hmm. therapy is the only thing that's going to help them to learn how to communicate properly and so if you find that you're married to a narcissist one of the things that you can do is you start praying for that person and uh, pray that the Lord will lead them into therapy because really trying to communicate to a narcissist is really like bumping your head against the wall it really is prayer does work um, and they will have that narcissistic personality through your prayer will have uh, moments of clarity when they realize um, that they are wrong, even um, apologizing. And it doesn't mean that they don't mean it because at that time they do mean it, but it does also mean that they probably will repeat the same behavior because they're narcissistic. So that person really needs to be in therapy. Um, and you can't suggest therapy to them because then they're rejected altogether. Right. So the best thing for you to do in that situation is, well, the best thing for anybody to do in any, any situation is to pray. So you want to pray that that person, um, uh, the Lord will lead that person to get some help or deliver that person because there's really nothing that you can do otherwise. That is a real and true mental health disorder that's true amen all right amen that's true um let's see we had another question about i statements so evangelist Sylvester, could you talk a little bit more about i statements so when you talk and when we talked i said a little earlier uh that we want to use i statements when we talk about using I statements, you talk in particular about how you feel, uh, what you think, or what you believe. 
and you give the other person a chance without being accusatory. Let me say that again. Well, I, I believe that you um, overreacted, or I believe that um, our, we're not communicating as well as we could, or I feel as though you don't listen to me or pay attention to me. So you always use an I statement in order to express how you're feeling. Um, you don't want to uh, use blaming statements. So I statements are real good so that you are putting the ball in your court. And you're saying, this is what's going on with me. I want you to hear what I'm saying. Does that help? Yeah. 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 Um, that does help. Amen. Um, I, someone reiterated a question in the chat about, um, narcissism. And I don't know, maybe that's the topic that we need to discuss Evangelist Sylvester one day. Narcissism. <laughs> um, it says they don't think, so in regards to that uh, relationship where they're married to the narcissist, they were saying um, they don't think the, nar the narcissist doesn't think that they need therapy. And I was just telling them that most narcissists don't think that they need therapy. Right, that's why I said don't even try to mention that to a narcissist because if you tell a narcissist that they need therapy, it's gonna, they're, they're never going to seek help. Yeah. So, um, you know, it, because this is a, we, we use, we banty about the word narcissistic. Oh, they just have a narcissistic personality. We banty that around a lot. You do. But a true person who had a true narcissistic personality type is not going to be open to anything that you say. And no matter how you use any of these things that I'm telling you about, the proper body language, um, not ordering them around, not threatening them, not lecturing them, um, no, uh, you know, using I statements. Um, they're, they are going to always, always take it as an attack on them. And so, again, um, a nar narcissistic personality types are a, uh, definitely a mental health condition. Um, people need to be in therapy for them and some even on medication. Yeah. Amen. That's true. Amen. Uh, another question is, um, in terms of communication, how do you communicate that you need time and space to address a situation? And so, using the I statement, um, you can say, um, I feel that things are not going as well as they could, and I need to take some time to reevaluate myself, my feelings, or whatever was going, whatever's going on with you. Um, and don't say, I know this sounds good, but don't say it. It's not you, it's me. Please don't say that to a person because they automatically gonna internalize that as being them. So you want to keep it with you. I'm not feeling my best. I don't, I don't, feel as though I, I'll be able to give you the best part of me right now. I'm not sure what's going on with me. I need some time to reevaluate myself and my feelings. Um, those type of statements, you can um, say those to people. Um, mm -hmm. And again, before you start this conversation, pray so that um, and ask the Lord to give you uh, the right tempo uh, in your delivery and also that the person, the Lord will open that person's heart so they'll be able to receive it without them being hurt. Because I know that the Bible tells us to speak the truth, but we have to speak the truth in love. We don't want to damage another person because of some stuff that's going on with us. So we always want to think about how that other person is going to be impacted by what we say. Amen. That's true. That's true. You don't want to bleed on to other people. Um, another question is, what should I do if using I statements still causes conflict in communication? 
sometimes the person feels as though you are, I, I would assume, attacking them. Oh, sometimes a person still feels you are pointing out things about them, even when you are addressing what you feel when using I statements. So um, let's think about how you're saying it. Are you saying it in an accusatory tone? Are you saying it in a, in a judgmental way? Um, one of the things I talked about earlier is our tone and our body language. You know, you can make your mouth say anything, but your body really tells off your posture of your body, whether it's tense or relaxed, tells a person whether or not what you're saying is, a, is really about you or about them. Remember I said before that 63% of us communicate through our body language. So in other words, people are not really listening to what you're saying. They're paying attention to what, how, how you're moving or not moving, whether you're tense or your, uh, your, your, the volume of your voice, the tone of your voice. So you may want to um, pray and ask the Lord to help you to correct the way you communicate. That's your nonverbal communication, your body cues. Because most of the time, people pick up on your body cues and they don't even realize they're picking up on your body cues. That's true. So you may want to, you know, take a look at your body cues and the tone of your voice when you're speaking to another person. Amen. Amen. And then also make sure that, like, if Andrew said this, I said, make sure it's about you and not that person. So if, you know, if you're having an argument and you say, I feel as though you're getting upset, you know, um, I don't know, that may, so if that, in that case, if that's the best all, you're in an argument. That's really a you statement, yeah. The I statement has to be all about you. You can't say, you can't use the word I, and then in the same sentence, you're saying something about that person. Okay. I think, I think that you're being unrealistic. I don't believe that you uh, care about anybody else but you. That's not okay. I. Statement. So we have to kind of look at um, the I statement should specifically be about you. Right. Okay. So in that situation where you are having an argument and you feel as though they're getting um, animated or they're upset, how would you pose a I statement? I'm not comfortable. I'm not comfortable in the direction of which this conversation is taking. Okay. Uh huh. And then you want to say it in a low monotone. Remember, if a person is hollering, you don't holler back. I know that's instinct, but when they raise their voice, you lower your voice. And if they continue to raise their voice, um, then the best thing for you to do is to remove yourself. Because again, unacceptable behavior is just that. It's unacceptable. You do not have to accept unacceptable behavior. And you can say things like, um, when, you're, when you are better able to communicate by talking and not screaming, then we'll revisit this. And you can walk away. Real simple. Mm hmm Okay. That's really good. Amen. Um, let's see. There was another question. No, I don't know if there was another question. I think that was it. Um, there is another comment. Um, the individual who's married to the narcissist. Um, it's just asking for prayer. Um, they're saying that they can relate to everything that's being said. Um, but they, they just want prayer for direction. Yeah on you know where to go and what to do you know and then also strength so um we will definitely continue to keep you in prayer um if there are no more questions uh carmen may i make a statement yes ma'am so if you're if you're married to a narcissistic personality or if you live with a per, uh, not if your sister your brother your father, your mother, your uncle, 
someone close to you has a narcissistic personality and you deal with them on a continual basis, you probably need to be in therapy yourself. Yeah. So that, um, I'm not saying that, you know, you are um, a crazy, I don't use that terminology, but just so that you can stay balanced yourself because a narcissistic personality will have you thinking that you are crazy. Um, they will have you thinking that what you're feeling is wrong. Mm -hmm. And um, so they, they, they really know how to turn the tables on you. And so they'll have you thinking that you all messed up when it's really not you, it's them. Right, so, gaslighting. Yeah, so you, um, it would be good for you to enter into therapy or to, to um, I, and I would say professional therapy, especially if that person is truly a narcissistic personality type. You definitely need um, some therapy. Amen. Definitely. Okay. I, we got a couple of more questions that will, um, okay. Somebody asked, what is a narcissist? And then what if it's you with the narcissistic personality? Well, um, it's not you because you wouldn't even ask that question if you were a narcissistic personality. No, you would never admit that. Um, everybody's wrong, but you, um, but I guess the question is, yeah. Yeah, if you're a narcissist, you would never care whether you're the narcissist. Like, you wouldn't care. Um, so, like I said, we will definitely address narcissism um, at a later date. But to give an answer to that question, thank you, Sister Kenyatta. She says, narcissistic personality disorder one of the several types of a personality disorder is a mental condition in which people have an inflated sense of their own importance, a deep need for excessive attention and admiration, trouble relationships, and a lack of empathy for others. And then the stem of it all is basically they have low self-esteem. It's their ego. Um, I like to kind of define it as an ego problem. You know, your ego is so damaged that you have to inflate yourself in order just to um, make yourself feel okay. And any attack at your ego, it'll get, um, it'll get ugly. So like um, Evangelist Vesa was saying, you know, telling a person who's narcissist that, you know, they're wrong or they're bad, is gonna go one ear and out the other because they can't afford to hear something that affects their ego. And they're going to gaslight you and make it seem like you're the problem when it's really them. Yeah. Uh, somebody said love with self-esteem on steroids. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but they lack empathy and understanding towards other people, too. Yeah. Um, and um, they manipulate or exploit people for their own personal gain. Mm -hmm. So, you know... Uh, but that's a maybe that's something we need to talk about narcissistic personality, right? Yeah, Carmen? yeah, we can definitely talk about that. Um, and those are all the questions that we had. So thank you everyone um, for coming out uh, for praying with us. Um, keep us in your prayers. Keep each other in your prayers. Um, this evening, we're going to be talking about more about communication. Um, De-escalating situations is a great topic that we will talk about. Um, and uh, if you have any questions, any comments, please feel free to bring them back this, uh, this afternoon. Um, and I'm going to ask Bishop to dismiss us in prayer.